Great guys, how you doing? Hey, Ronan Man here. You know, our the truth in the world is being attacked on so many levels and in so many ways. In this video, I'm going to uncover a fraud, and this is a world first here. So this, I hope this. Uh, please share this video if you think what I uncovered is valuable. Uh, I'm going to uncover what I believe to be a fraud, uh, which is a social justice warrior impersonating a data scientist and basically taking the world stage uh, in a new field and that's a uh, big data artificial intelligence uh, so let's let's look at this here I saw this video and somebody that I knew on my Facebook posted this video and so I watched the video I watched it actually a couple times because it came up twice it was it was like a couple weeks ago I think it was and then just uh, today so I, I looked at it and I there was something about this video that got me I was a little bit um, doubtful and I just started to research a little bit that's not always easy to do but uh, the, the name of the woman here in the video is Kathy O'Neill okay now if you look her name up uh, if you search data skeptic Kathy O'Neill uh, you're gonna come up with tons of articles and all these articles have very very similar quotes and that's the first thing that you when you're encountering a hoax is there's not a depth of information. It's just the same information from everybody. You know, the same words, the same exact same ideas, the same quotes. That's when you know you're 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 not on to something, but you're 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 you know you're getting warm, right? So I looked at her name and I started to see that there wasn't much there. So I saw a data scientist, um, and I had never heard of her, and I do study machine learning myself in my free time. I'm very interested in artificial intelligence. And I think that every man, uh, especially every MGTOW, should be very interested in artificial intelligence. And the reason why, uh, and I thought about doing, I haven't done a podcast on it yet, uh, but I think I, I will in the future. Um, and the reason why is because this is a major trend that's going to affect hiring, it's going to affect employment, it's going to affect salaries. And already in the uh, data world, uh, a, a scientist who's an expert at getting big data crunching big data basically essentially taking big data and getting it into the algorithm that that uh, skill is not easy and the the guys that are uh, good at it in Silicon Valley right now are getting more than Tom Brady uh, the NFL quarterback so you know it's a very high paying field it's a very promising field and it has the chance I believe to totally um, I don't know if you call it rejuvenate or whatever. It's it, it's going to be a. I believe it's going to be bigger than the internet. So that's how that's how big I think it is. That's why I study it. That's why I started studying algorithms, uh, various algorithms that that there's different algorithms that they use uh, in machine learning, and I believe there'll be one or two or three that will be end up being the, the 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 ones that really work. But either way, let's go into this one here. So we have this woman. She basically breaks out into the world stage with a book and with a TED talk okay so she didn't come on to, you, know, you always have to look at where somebody how did somebody get to where they are so in other words uh, you know there was that Google engineer who was fired uh, for writing the memo about uh, males and females in uh, in uh, programming and he was a top uh, Google uh, engineer right and he was a well-known you knew where he came from he came from Google and also he had a stellar record at Google. He was very uh, liked by his peers. His work was respected. So you knew you had an idea of where he was from. But when you see somebody, when they bust onto the stage on a TED Talk, uh, you know, I love TED Talks. So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying TED Talks are no good. But I'm just saying that when, when somebody comes on a stage, it's not a scientific thing. It's, 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 there's a lot of frauds on TED Talks, okay, in a, in a nutshell. There's a, there's a lot of people who've talked their way into the, you know, uh, one of my, a girl that I slept with actually <laughs> did a TED Talk, and I watched it, and I was like, oh, my God. I, you know, I can't even, like, it was it was so pathetic. It was, nobody was doing any research on this girl. Trust me on that one. But uh, either way, so, okay, so we have this woman. She broke into the, you know, into the, I, I would say the, the public arena uh, through a TED talk. Okay, fine. I've met, uh, I've, I've, you know, digitally met a lot of uh, people that I really respect and trust uh, from TED talks. So, okay, great. So let's look at the um, 
Let's go down here. I don't know why this is not. My computer is a bit uh, strange today. I don't know why. Uh, but uh, basically what she is in this, and I'm going to put the link here below to this. She she has a couple of words uh, like weapons of math destruction. Okay, so that's pretty catchy, right? So she's got a book here, weapons of math destruction. And when you see somebody on a TED Talk who is talking about machine learning, big data, artificial intelligence, uh, your first thought is to think that this is a professional, right? If I if I'm if I'm walking down to the you know liquor store, by the liquor store, and I see somebody begging out front, uh, you know maybe they're crazy, maybe they're stabbing themselves with a pen, and, and they start talking about artificial intelligence, I'm not going to think he probably is you know one of the world's cutting edge. You know what I mean? he he knows what he's doing. About I I would probably th you know cross the street, try to get by the guy without getting stabbed by the pen, right? Whereas when I see somebody on TED Talk, I'm like, whoa, okay, all right, they made it to the TED Talk, right? Let's watch it. Let's see what they say. So here she's got this book. Okay, I'll just go quick. She, data skeptic, and okay, that's another thing, skeptic. Data skeptic Kathy O'Neill uncovers the dark secrets of big data, showing how our objective algorithms could, in fact, reinforce human bias. Okay. So she talks about in this interview, and I, or sorry, a speech, and I recommend you watch it. It's not long. It's it's like less ten minutes or something, right? Okay. So she was featured. Oh, by the way, if you say that the TED Talk was presented uh, was presented at the official TED conference, it's not a. There's there's mini TEDs and there's like a big TED. This is the big one, and was featured by our editors on the homepage. So this woman got all the loving, and that's why she keeps showing up on my Facebook. She got the loving from Ted. But let's look, let's uncover who this person is and what they have to say because what she had to say was exactly the same thing that you hear from any social justice warrior if you watch her speech. It's basically the exact same words uh, with the exact same kind of anger and just illogical thinking. It's, it's just like she's just basically out there uh, saying what any social justice warrior would be saying, but she is saying that she is a data scientist and this is and the, and what we need to do what she's worried about and what I think a lot of people are worried about is uh, the 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 loss of control of the narrative so for example until now you had uh, editors choose which news stories get featured okay so in this case uh, we see that Ted chose her okay this is actually an indictment on Ted itself because they chose this woman, and as you're going to see in this podcast, this woman has no credibility in what she's talking about. Uh, she really, I don't know what she did. If she was hotter, I would say she probably screwed her way to the top, but I, that's not the case, so I don't know what it is, some kind of connection she had to get in there. But let's look at what it is. Okay, let's just look quickly over, go over the, blur, the blurb here. Algorithms decide who gets a loan, who gets a job interview, who gets insurance, and much more, but don't automatically make things fair. So her argument is that, Humans have biases, they write them in the code, and these codes are now controlling the world and they will more in the future. So we need to control these codes. The problem with that is, uh, the big problem with that is, is that artificial intelligence, the reason why it's so awesome is because, uh, the reason why it has such a future is because it doesn't require human interaction. So it doesn't, human bias, and ability to stop it, ability to cause it, make it say something, is 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 not part of it. It's 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 machine learning. It's taking the data. It's learning. It's learning on its own. So, for example, the Communist Party had a recent huge blow up with one of their uh, machine learning. They asked the Communist Party, uh, "Do you love the Communist Party?" And then and they were like, uh, "You know, no way, right?" <laughs> You know, basically, the artificial intelligence said the real answer, and it was hilarious. I'll put the link below. I don't have it right here, but it, it's it's absolutely hilarious. And the the communist government quickly shut down the artificial intelligence. The reason why is because it actually was intelligent. It was looking at, it was looking for answers. It was finding answers. It was giving the answer, the correct answer. But nobody wanted that answer. The, a lot of people don't want the truth to be out, so they're going to be. They're going to be upset if, if artificial intelligence is too smart, okay? And this is exactly what uh, Kathy O'Neill is trying to do. She's trying to stop artificial intelligence from going too far. She wants 
her group to be in control of artificial intelligence. And let's look at her background. So uh, we have her, her, her um, speech, which you can watch. Now here she is getting more love. Now this is the Ford Foundation. I don't know if you know the Ford Foundation, if you're not in the US. The Ford Foundation is a very respected, uh, you know, uh, not just website here, but they, 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 they sponsor a lot of different uh, things like art and, you know, just anything that's like very reputable. It's like, they're, they're not controversial. They, you know, they, and, and so for her to be on the cover here of Ford Foundation is, is pretty alarming actually. Okay, so let's look at, uh, they have an interview here, Weapons of Math Destruction again. Uh, data scientist Kathy O'Neill on how unfair algorithms perpetuate inequality. Okay, so now we have somebody interviewing here. Uh, let's see here. Who's interviewing her? Uh, Lori McGlin uh, McGlinchey, which is Internet Freedom, and Jerry, uh, Jenny Toomey, which is also the director of Internet Freedom. Okay. Internet Freedom. Okay. Mathematical models, same thing. She's saying that they're, they're, they're biased, right? Um, but uh, let's go down... Uh, her revealing books and they're really giving her hand jobs right and left like everybody nobody and I looked online there's nobody questioning this woman everybody is like data scientist Kathy O'Neill uh, you know expert blah 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 TED talk blah 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 Ford Foundation blah 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 everything is good if you search her name now I guarantee you there's nothing out there that would give you any kind of pause that this woman maybe doesn't uh, isn't a data scientist right uh, so she goes back in the same thing uh, data algorithms uh, are made by infallible human beings blah 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 they're human beings they 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 manage our lives so she's saying that people are scared of these things and they're they're powerful uh, so she she's in her book she breaks down these complex issues so she's this she's teaching you right she's 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 the expert right helping us understand how algorithms rule our lives. Now, if you look at algorithms and if you look at the output of data, machine, you know, machine learning data, it's pretty darn accurate. And you know, you can see it in many ways in your life. Like for example, on YouTube, if you look at the suggested videos, they tend to be very, at least for me and I like my friends, they tend to be very good. Um, give you ideas that you never thought of that are very like in tune with what you're watching, in tune with what you like. So I would be watching like my favorite artist and then there'll be another uh, video that says that artist rare live, you know, performance in a garage or something, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't know they performed in a garage and I'll watch it, right? And it's like amazing, right? That's that's machine learning, that's, art, that's the output of artificial intelligence. So we're using it now and Google, every Google search is, is machine learning, artificial intelligence, we're using it all the time, and it's making our life great. We use it, we trust it. Uh, we don't understand it, most people, but we, we use it and trust it all the time. But all of a sudden, you have this woman popping up, and she's saying it's completely biased, right? Okay, so let's go into here. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, now here's where I started to doubt uh, more, right? Uh, another red flag. Okay, so here's the history of Catherine O'Neill. Soon after she left academia okay so she was an academic and if you watch the uh, her speech she talks about being a teacher she talks about teachers getting hired everything's about being a teacher so again as an intelligent human being you gotta say if someone is in academia and she talks about teachers all the time that's probably her experience right that's probably what she knows right she's out there She's, she's, this is her expertise, this is her chance to talk about machine learning and talk about data and talk about algorithms, you know what I mean, and talk about the different languages, right, that people are using, right, to, to, to encode and to, you know, the, 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 the benefits of these different, you know, neural networks and all these different things, you know, this is your chance to really shine, but her example is about uh, blacks, whites, hiring as teachers, right? And then, that was another thing, it's another major red flag for me, because that's not that complex, right? It's not like, uh, for example, like mathematics, I'm sorry, um, uh, traffic uh, patterns, self-learning, driving, self-driving, uh, 
you know, even even something like uh, relatively mundane, like weather prediction is artificial intelligence now. You know, there's all these things that she could have used as examples, but she used teachers, hiring teachers. And then we see here that she worked in academia. And then she went to the world of finance. Okay, so she's not a data scientist, right? Academia is not a data scientist. And I, I, I can show you, but we'll, we'll look more into her background here in a second. But, and then the world of finance. So finance is, is not at all artificial intelligence. There will be artificial intelligence in finance, no question about it. And, and they're starting to use artificial intelligence. Uh, there are small startups that are using artificial intelligence to choose stocks and choose investments. And there's, this is going to be definitely the way to go in the future but uh it's not it's not like a, a huge thing yet right so here her thing is math isn't pure she's the know-it-all here right so blah 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 blah. let's go into now she's got a wikipedia page here right let's look at her wikipedia page and she's a mathematician author of the blog math babe okay so i saw math babe i thought okay that's that's weird because I, I have hundreds of websites, right? So, not all I sorry, not all of them are websites. I have you know hundreds of domains. A lot of them are websites. Some of them don't have a website. But I've chosen a lot of domain names myself, and I've sold a lot of domain names. So I'm pretty good at choosing. Like I, when I see a domain name, and I always, I, I it really like I think about it. You know what I mean? Because I think I think domains are great investments. Actually, you can buy them for ten bucks and sell them for five hundred bucks. Pretty easy, right? So. Either way, so I see her math blog is her babe. Math blog dot ma sorry, mathbabe.org is her name. I thought babe, babe. And I just saw the uh, movie uh, What the Health, right? Uh, you know, and, and, and there was a uh, woman here, and she's the food babe. And uh, the food babe uh, was, has a very popular blog about food, and she investigates uh, different, uh, you know, foods, right? So, we got mathbabe.org, right? And then you got food babe. Okay, now food babe is first, right? Food babe, she's been around. This girl, and she's in stuff, right? And so she's got this food babe name, and she's in this, uh, like I said, she's in the uh, that movie, What the Health. And now you have this other woman who has this math babe blog, right? But, you know, you can see that this, I mean, they're, they're, they're I mean, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal, but. I mean, if you had, let's say you had like, okay, so we got babe, right? The word babe. Now look at that there. Okay, now let's go to the original babe right there, right? Got the math, the food babe there. And you can see more pictures of her here. And then you can see more pictures. You can see why she chose the name food babe, right? You, you can kind of like, it's pretty self-explanatory, right? She's, she's, uh, she's pretty attractive, right? You know? So she's like, someone said, you're the food babe. She's like, yeah, I'm the food babe, right? Made sense, right? Now, this woman here is the uh, math babe, okay? So it's a bit of a stretch. It really is a bit of a stretch. I mean, if we had, let's say, some overweight, uh, you know, very unattractive man who was the math hunk, uh, we wouldn't be taking it too seriously either. So it's not like she's a female. It's just that if there's two things going on here. I just want to... This is like a side note, but one of them is the word babe when you're not a babe is pretty weird to me. It's not like, I don't know. But the next thing is is that when, when you have a, a blogger with a famous blog using the same name and you, you just take babe and then you use it for yours, right? And you get a .org because you can't get the .com. That right there is like kind of stealing. I mean, it's not stealing, but it's definitely copying, right? So she's copying this other woman with the uh with the uh, page right and she's obviously uh, telling us the way it is and so here we go so she wrote the book weapons of math destruction she's the former director of the lead program of data practices okay at columbia university graduate school of journalism okay that's not a uh, that's not uh that's not google you know what i mean that's uh his cup, yeah, it's, uh, okay, so then she was a data science consultant, okay, and she lives in New York, and she's active in the Occupy movement, okay, so she's big in the Occupy movement, and she's big in a lot of these kind of <laughs> movements, right, she, uh, you know, she, she, 
<laughs> we're gonna see here. So let's look at her. Let's look at her blog. Let's real quick look at her blog. Um, and now this is the data scientist blog. Okay, this is, she has a TED talk. She is a data scientist supposedly. Let's look at her blog. Learning to eat again. Okay, I'm just gonna read a little bit. I'm learning to eat again like a newborn child. I have all sides of memories. I can't of how much I can eat and what I like to eat that are misleading. Uh, blah 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 blah. I used to eat, uh, clear deground ground meat. I could eat pot of chili. Blah blah. blah. I love to eat. I didn't. I knew I could only eat a bit of it at a time, comma. But I figured that was fine, comma, since I'd share with other people. That that is not grammatically correct. Uh, the truth is, comma. I couldn't eat at all. Uh, the truth is, I couldn't. I tried one tiny bowl of it and it felt like a million tons in my stomach. This is really awesome writing. You really got to respect this. And there's so much about data here. That's the way it's been for me. Pretty much all meat, including chicken. I can't seem to eat meat and feel good. I can eat fish, I, or precisely sashimi, blah, blah, blah. Traveling. Traveling while learning to eat sucks. I went with my kids a few days to West Springfield, Massachusetts. Talk about a food desert. Okay, so she, she's just really like, it's it's not not really like, you know, the most, um, you know, well-written blog here and uh, throwing the rule book out the window. Okay, so let's get down. Where is the data uh, scientist stuff? Okay, uh, let's see. So look who's fighting our academic overlords. Okay, now she uses data algorithmic overlords. So it's the same word she uses here. So she was, she, she uses the same one. Everyone's an overlord. She, if you watch it, there's like so many SAW buzzwords in her speech. It's amazing. I was going to write them all down, but I didn't want to watch it again. And then pause it and write them all. It's just, you can watch it. Uh, watch it once. Now let's, okay, now let's see. Where's the data? Oh, here's some interesting stuff. Disarm white supremacy. Okay. Now, now keep in mind, you know, this is, this is supposed to be this is a woman who's a data scientist who is on the world stage as somebody with a book about data science who supposedly is a data scientist and is telling us all what should we should do with these algorithms which are shaping, which are going to shape our lives and our economic destiny. There's no question about it. If we don't, if, if, if for example, the West, America, doesn't do well with this, China is going to do very, very well. Tencent. Uh, Alibaba, they are they are going to town. Huawei, they are going to town on algorithms, artificial intelligence. We need our best minds on it to even compete in this area. Not to mention win. Uh, and you know, the right now out of China is coming out uh, the world's finest uh, translation software, and that's artificial intelligence. And I'm not kidding either. It's better than the, it's better than Google. It's way better. I speak Chinese and I can I can use it. I'm like, whoa, this is awesome. It's so accurate. It's amazing. So we have a lot of competition. We don't have time for fake data scientists to be leading the discussion in artificial intelligence. So that's why I made this podcast. Okay, so let's go deeper. So here's disarm white supremacy. So okay, uh, right. So dangerous ideology, Black History Month. Uh, this is a collection of books and documents she'd like to share with you. Uh, Black history and poem form. So here's the different to ki- to be a slave. Uh, da da da. Back skin, white mask. The Poisonhood Bible. Native son. Recognizing a lot of these books. I am not your Negro. Yep. Between the world and me. Okay. So uh, the souls of black folk. Don't let. Don't let's go to the dogs tonight. Right, so here we go. There's poems, clickable poems. So they're very handy here. Uh, Alex Haley, Roots, right? I don't know if you've seen that. Uh, I'm old enough to be a slave. Uh, okay, so we're seeing Kill a Mockingbird. We're seeing like Douglas, uh, Frederick Douglas. Douglas, uh, actually, I like him, but uh, this is not a blog of a data scientist. I got to tell you. And here she is with her, her her thing, and now she's talking about losing weight, biking and swimming, and throwing away my scale. Uh, she got b- bariatric surgery, so she had her most of her stomach removed 
because she was too overweight, too obese. And then now she's a bit depressed about it. Horrible weather, blah, blah, blah. Now, this is the math babe who is now speaking for the world and giving advice to when you speak on a TED stage and you're featured on the front of TED and you're not you're not in one of the smaller TEDs, you're on the main stage and you're featured on the home page, you are speaking to government, no question. The academics, the government, the top uh, Silicon Valley, everybody watches TED. They watch it. It's 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 a, it's very influential on people's minds. And so here she is. She doesn't has she hasn't even mentioned anything about data. There's no algorithms. Women in tech. Okay, math still not everywhere, right? Math educators. Oh, there's educating university professor. These are words that a uh, teacher would uh, be talking about. I don't even find this is a helpful blog. Not to mention a well-written, or it's 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 a fraud as far as being a, uh, a you know a data uh, exploring and venting about quantitative issues. Okay, so let's look at some machine learning blogs. I just want to show you what a real machine learning data scientist blog looks like. Data science versus data analytics. What does it matter? 25 big data terms everyone should know. Should AI be used to run political systems? Uh, why large financial institutions struggle to adapt technology and data science? Okay, so let's go. Do, 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 do. Uh, cloud adaption, blah, blah, blah. Azure, which is uh, Microsoft, is getting big and using their cloud for data processing and crunching of big data, right? That's a huge thing. They were very smart to get into that. Let's look at another one here. Simply statistics, it's called. Uh, why Ogata's resi residual analysis for point processes. Data science on a Chromebook. That's pretty amazing because a Chromebook's not very powerful, right? That's that's a pretty cool article, actually. I'd like to read that. Uh, simple Q package for R. Code for my educational guest. In announcing the tidy Pavel's package. Okay, so we see here, do, 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 we see a lot about uh, different data related things and here we go flowing data here's a good one now visualization statistics maps software working with data infographics sources getting data networks connecting data making data readable uh, useless data comparison so it's like this is a pretty good blog uh, they have courses tutorials books recommended books and membership uh, and they go into all kinds of stuff you can see this is a Helpful, and this, these are the ten most popular machine learning blogs that I picked. So these are these are this is what you can compare to this uh, uh, Kathy O'Neill fraud of a data scientist. You can see what a real data scientist looks like and the way they think. Here's another one: your source for machine learning, deep learning, right? Machine learning. Uh, let's see here. Dun dun dun. These are. Artificial intelligence, uh, blah, 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 blah. Big data, okay. And they interview some, some people, MIT, computer science, and AI laboratory. Now, this is the kind of place that a data scientist works at. You can work in academia, but you're working at the MIT computer science and artificial intelligence laboratory. That's a data scientist. So you can be, obviously, you can be in academia, and you can be a data scientist, but... The thing is, is that the top guys are getting paid so well that they don't last that long, and that's one of the biggest problems right now in artificial intelligence is the smart guys all leave academia. You know, If you're in academia too long, it's not a good sign, although there are going to be those kind of kind-hearted good people who you know, pass up the money to teach the next generation. There's going to be that type of person, but in general, it's a huge problem right now in a very uh, competitive field like artificial intelligence, especially artificial intelligence, because it's so important and so high paying. I just want to show you a couple more. Here we go, Data, Data Science Central. Here they have the uh, they have the different uh, uh, all kinds of algorithms. You know, uh, you know, blah blah blah. Humans in the in the loop, deep learning. That's a different type. That's assisted deep learning, where you have a human being involved. In it. What what uh, Kathy O'Neill is saying, without even knowing it. Is, 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 is not just assisted, but she's basically slowing down and stopping artificial intelligence. Don't let it run because it might say something. And what she didn't say 
is that 70% of teachers, between 70 and 80% of teachers are female. And artificial intelligence, there's a very good chance, would look at that and say, wait, what percentage of the students are male and female? They would say, oh, well, there's 51 and 49 or whatever, you know. And it would say, oh, okay. And they would look at the patterns of who's studying under who and who succeeded. And they would say, oh, maybe, you know, we need some more men in this field, right, in education, right. And it would start to take po power away from uh, feminists and the whole social justice movement and that it's controlling right now education that's making it close to, you know, going up close to 100% of teachers are female. So that losing that power is like a huge, huge blow, right? And that's, she didn't even talk about that. You know, she talked about teachers getting hired. If, if she had any, like even efficacy, she would have said, yeah, I mean, the first thing is look, look how dominant this is by females. Machine intelligence can fix this, fix this in a minute because they immediately can calculate how many teachers, right? We got to get some less women. We got to get women out of there, right? We need some guys in there, right? We need guys. And the reason is, is not just to be fair, but also because students, uh, boys are very different than girls. And we know that, that female teachers give lower grades to boys uh, when they know that they're boys. So in other words, the study is, is that female teachers, if they don't know the sex of the student, they'll give the, 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 the test a higher grade, and when they find out it's a boy, they'll give it a lower grade, right? So this is a bias, right? So we, this type of bias, we don't need in education. So machine learning would quickly say, oh, wait a second, you know, we're seeing some, yeah, you know, things that are not cool here. Let's fix this. Let's get some guys in there. Let's get rid of this teacher, get rid of that teacher. Let's get some... Uh, you know, uh, better teachers in here, right? And that's the kind of thing that would scare the living shit out of somebody like this, right? So here we go. Here's the last last blog to show you here. Uh, so we got like uh, PyTorch, right? Now PyTorch is a uh, torch is basically a um, a deep learning framework, right? And it's a uh, it was it was basically it was based on another language and they change it to Python right so here we have in this in this uh, they have a, a uh, I'm gonna listen to this later a um, a uh, uh, podcast so it's kind of nice you can you don't just have to read I like I like um, I like to listen more than I like to uh, that's why I make long long podcasts because I like long podcasts myself I watch them all the time I, I love to listen I, I walk every night three or four hours I'll listen to mp3s of podcasts and videos because that's the way I learn that's the way I prefer to learn and that's why I like to make stuff this way and uh, some people say it's too long but uh, that's they have a different learning style you know which is uh, totally cool totally totally cool we all have different ways of learning right so here's another hardcore data science and data engineering the data show blah 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 machine learning algorithms I think you get the picture the picture is is that when you compare a, you know, when you can, when you compare one of these uh, data scientists, uh, or sorry, uh, websites or blogs, okay, like this one here uh, that we looked at, uh, and then you compare it to the math blog. Let's go to Kathy O'Neill, who is now telling us all how it is with algorithms, and she knows everything, and it's all biased. You can't trust them. You have to control them. You have to hire. And then her her blog is about Black Lives Matter uh, and uh, white supremacy. Uh, you can see you can see the difference in this this uh, blog. Uh, this woman is not a data scientist. That's the only thing you can say. She's a teacher. She's an important. This is an important uh, figure because she is the first one, the kind of fake data scientist here. Who is going to try to tell us what to do and to uh, guide the thinking of government? She's going for it.